Thanks for listening to the Drummer's Weekly Groovecast. You can contact the show at twitter.com forward slash DW Groovecast and through Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Drummer's Weekly Groovecast. Good evening. I am warning you right now, if you touch my drums, I will stab you in the neck with a knife. Ain't a fucking. Ain't a fucking. Mom! Take it easy, lower it. I'm, I'm not gonna lower it, I have to do this now. I don't want you to it, but lower it. Are we gonna straighten out? No, oh, we had a problem. I mean, uh, we tried to do everything we could. What do you mean? Well, you know what I mean. Nice! Little trouble there. You're rushing. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I waited. One. Uh, what? W- one. Oh, sorry. We did wait after one set of fours. I, I was just trying to figure out where one was. Good job. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't where one really is, but, it, uh, it, you know, N.A. for effort. Happy fall, John. It's fall. God, it's great. I'm telling you. It is so nice. I had a field day at the elementary school yesterday, and stood out in the sun and didn't die that's a good sign for a summer hater like me well for the listeners that have never been to where we broadcast from which is at atlanta you have about three weeks in the spring and then three weeks in the fall to actually enjoy that's true yeah although i'm going to be optimistic and say we're going to get four three months (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah remember i grew up in northern illinois so it's like oh yeah eh, you know january's not that bad not that bad not here no uh i'm gonna go ahead and fess up to something mm-hmm. before we get oh boy into the show i got a very short ice bell <laughs> <God. laughs> no it. i got a very short maybe terse but possibly gloating message regarding last week's um podcast it was a two word <laughs> it was he doesn't suck i did i didn't know I didn't, <laughs> come on I didn't know it's amazing you, go to youtube it, it simply said cubs win oh. <laughs> so so I'm I'm gonna go ahead and just come right out and say, John, my How about them Falcons. My my World Series predictions have already gone down the proverbial dumper and, and and is also the perfect segue to say why I don't bet on sports, sir. I just wanna say hi TJ. <laughs> Cubs fan, I suppose. He, no, no, yeah, he okay. just like okay. gave me a hard time about talking about sports on Austin drawing. Matthews <laughs> yeah. Austin Matthews playing faux faux Whew. like I said yesterday he's on pace for a 300 goal <laughs> season right <laughs> a- any yeah. any any potential positives in the great city of Toronto regarding hockey is welcome Dude, even by someone who's not a fan I'm t- and we do have listeners in Toronto and, and let me say this to temper your expectations you guys blew that freaking game man mm. I mean Ottawa who who's not going to set the world on fire this year came back and spoiled a four goal masterpiece by your American wonderkind Ugh, not what I expect from an original six gentlemen Exact, Ladies and gentlemen. It's exactly what I expected from that original uh, no. six. Snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. I, I have a hard time like having an attitude about any of the original six, and I want them to do well. So I'm hoping Toronto turns it around. They're getting into baseball up there, and that makes me nervous. Yeah, boy, they took out the guys that I had picked for the World Series. So, again, Bye-bye. shows you how much I know about sports Hi, TJ. Predictions and whatnot. Anyway. But, uh, all right, guys. We'll, we'll start talking about drums. We get the hint mm. a little bit. But, drums. Yeah. Uh, so, 
as always, we'll get the perfunctories out of the way. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, we've got a, a, a rather large contingent checking us out in Brazil, John. So how's your, port, how's your Portuguese? It's a lot better than my samba. Oh, man. That is, that's a heady statement. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't it, speak a lick of Portuguese and it smokes my samba. Uh, let me tell you, you know what, you know what the folks in Brazil love when you're down there? They love it when you like do some like ham fisted Spanish, oh, you yeah. know? They oh, like they like that, man. When you do that, that's good stuff to that, them. That, that's, sort of, that's kind of like when you're in Paris and you just yeah. say, can you speak American? Uh, one of, <laughs> that goes yeah. pretty well. One of, one of my favorites when you're a Spanish speaking country and like, you know, I took Spanish in high school and college, and they teach like the Castilian dialect. So it's it's very similar to like having somebody from Spain coming over here and speaking like old English, like Shakespearean <laughs> English. And they're just like, dude, we speak English. Just shut up and speak English, you know. So my, my little nephew the other day was going on about. I was telling him to hurry up about something, and and I said, and I said, uh, Andre, Andre. And he said, no, it's Hyundai. It's Hyundai. And he just like wouldn't let it go. Man. He's like, no, it's Hyundai. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Those kids say the darndest things. I tell you. So anyway, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Brazil. We've got a bunch of listeners in several different uh, cities down there. We've got them in uh, Re uh, Recife, um, Sao Paulo, nice. Salvador. Uh, and uh, uh, I'll think of it in a minute, man. I'll think. Uh, Oh, what's the other? There's the other uh, big Rio, Rio de Janeiro. We've got uh, listeners in all those. Country raised on rhythm. You got I that right. That. Yeah. So, uh, aside from the fact that some anonymous um, listener sent me the two word cub win thing, thanks for uh, listening and sending uh, your comments. And uh, we appreciate any contact that you guys have, any questions, any just. Uh, ideas for the show as always you can catch us at our facebook address or our facebook page at facebook.com forward slash drummers weekly groovecast you can tweet us with non-nasty tweets at dw groovecast cubs win and uh you can also just email us at our traditional email address drummers weekly groovecast at gmail.com so onward and upward this week uh, we're going to get into our topic for the day. And for those of you who uh, read the title of this podcast, you're probably thinking, that don't make no sense. They, they've lost it. Yeah. And so what we mean by our title, which is how good is your bad, is essentially how do you maintain the level you need to be as a professional player so that when you have your worst night, you're still better than an amateur player? So that's, in a nutshell, what this means. And so what we want to do today is we want to talk about there are several different things that can cause you to have a bad night. And there are several different negative effects that can come from NLDS. that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Sorry. You were saying it's all right. It's okay. And then we want to talk about how you can overcome having a bad night. Because let me tell you, if you do this long enough, you are going to have a bad night. Or 780 of them. In a row? Some people would... <laughs> Say that. Say that. Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, this, this topic, by the way, let me say this. And I want to give somebody out there some credit on this. Okay. Because I saw uh, an article that related somewhat to this in a magazine years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember it fascinated me. And it just kind of barely touched or, you know, it was a short article. It barely touched on it. And then... You know, I thought there are a lot of other ways that we can go with this, you know. So so whoever wrote an article similar to what we're talking about, it could have been 15 years ago. I just can't remember. I'm going to give somebody some props. Awesome. We got to. Got to give somebody some We props. have no money and you don't want to sue us. He, John said that. 
Harvey's, Phil's got a lot of money. Bro. Harvey's got a lot of money, my dog. Uh, no, that's the show right. mascot. Yeah. So anyway, onward and upward. So John, talking about talking about bad nights. No, uh, basically, there's going to be a time when you are either on the road or doing a local gig that you're going to be sick. You're going to be just tired. You're going to have to play on some bad drum gear, like say it's a backline rental thing, or it could be a thing where you have to, you know, you're doing multiple uh, bands and you're playing on another drummer's gear. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have something like uh, tech issues on the gig, bad sound, bad monitoring. Uh, yeah. Bad mix can really it, factor into it's this not good. Time. You could have arguments with your bandmates. No. Never, right? That no. never happens. And then if you are on the road, you could have travel related problems, such as things like you might have real early like lobby call times. Um, you might have bad food or no food mm -hmm. on the gig. It's it's hard eating well on the road, especially if you do that, if you make it a point to do it while you're at home. Sure. You know, I mean, it's even it's actually it's even hard sometimes if you're doing local gigs to eat well with the catering on local gigs right. much much less if you are on the road and you're traveling and you're going through airports or you're on oh, yeah. cars or buses or something like that you know it's, it's and and, and, and there therein is another part of you know delays yeah traffic or flight delays all that and the stress of all that that stuff wears me out more makes me more tired than like doing gigs uh, absolutely you know? yeah. yeah um that it it really especially the way we're wired where it's like be on time be prepared have that mm -hmm. downtime given the yep. opportunity all that travel issues are brutal yeah and then you've also got the problem sometimes you have hotel or lodging issues as well whether it just be bad hotel have problems checking in problems with the hotel you know that kind of all these different things can lead you to have bad nights whenever you play and you know a lot of times they are compounding things in other words it's not not just one thing it might be six of these things that we talked about you know over yep. a period of time i know those nights <laughs> yeah i think we all do if we've been doing it long enough and ultimately the negative effects that could happen from that is it's very easy when You've had several of these things happen to let the let your emotions get the best of you. Got to be careful with that. It can affect you in a lot of different ways. You can also have problems like I know for me that a lot of times fatigue affects me more mentally than it does physically. I just have problems concentrating, having have problems being present. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it, it always seems like I don't know if it's that we're just in tune enough with our bodies, but it always seems like we can muscle through a gig or, yeah, you know, like even that, like I got 30 minutes to go. I know exactly what I got to do to get through this, all that. The physical end of it, though challenging, especially with a, a day of, mm -hmm. you know, insane travel or problems with said travel, um, it can really... It can be it can be a challenge, but the mental part of it, I, I completely agree. It's it just it'll wear you out in a heartbeat. Yeah. Um, and we also, especially as creatives, can have a lot of times difficulty letting things go, you know, and just being wrapped up in that drama or that frustration, and you know, managing it. So it's funny how sometimes our obsession and attention to detail that really helps us from a standpoint of focusing in on things that we need to do to make ourselves better from standpoint of practice or whatever we do as drummers that make us what we are get us to the level that we are boy it can turn and really affect us from the negative side of things that when something does go bad that all of that focus and that obsession goes straight to that yeah, you know. that's that that's true. Um I think though we don't want to admit it, you know, in the most negative terms, you know, sometimes 
our rigidness mm -hmm. or our our expectations we put on a situation or our uh, you know just our idea of what we need to get to that place at downbeat where we're really ready to go i mean man we're not being catered to like rock stars on our in our world you know so inevitably things are going to present themselves that could change that mm -hmm. routine or expectations or that you know just level of comfort and you know there's there's just there's ways to deal with that and you have to figure it out because again we're not in this little bubble where someone's catering to us at every turn and basically telling us where we need to be and holding our hand and getting us there that's one of the advantages of mm -hmm. you know a really successful situation but we're not talking about that right and you lead us perfectly into the real reason for this podcast. Mm -hmm. And that is, we're now going to tell you some different things that can help you get past that bad night. Or in other words, some things that you can do that's going to make your bad be better than the amateur's good, right? Which is, that's what we all want to strive for. We want to have a level of performance that is consistently better than the best amateur because that's what's essentially if you think about it that's the that's the one thing that really makes us professional from that standpoint right in other words that if you're a pro even at your worst your abilities your sound what you bring to the table is going to be better than even the best night that an amateur might have in your place it, yeah. it certainly should be Right. Or, or if, if not, you need to strive to, to get to that place. Exactly. And so I'll go ahead and start with the first thing. And it's, it's going to seem obvious, okay? But let me explain it a little bit in what I'm talking about. And the first thing is we have to be, as drummers, we have to maintain a level of drumming technique that is higher and more sophisticated then you need for the gig that you're playing, okay? And basically what I'm going to call that, I'm going to call that you need to have some headroom in your technique. Because, here's the thing, if you're having a bad night, you've got to fall back first and foremost on your just pure drumming and technical abilities to get you through that gig. And if you are barely hanging on, Technique wise, in other words, if you are just barely making it happen on a good night, then you're probably sunk when it comes to when you have to deal with some adversity, mm -hmm. you know? So you've got to make sure that in your practice and in your preparation to do your gig, that you've got to be well above the level of technique and musicianship to do that gig so that when you're at your worst, you can fall back on that and then you're going to be able to play consistently better. Yeah. I uh, I think that the technique thing, that that's a, I know speaking from my point of view, you know, I don't have a lot of technique, but. You got more than you think you do. Trust me. Very true. Very true. Um, so, but I want to make sure I speak to some people that aren't maybe as, as hung up on that. Um, the the idea is um, as much recognizing what even in the worst of conditions what you are capable of doing and making good musical choices and um, so headroom and tech you know especially technique headroom. It, it, I, I see it a little broader than just the, the just the specific idea of technique, mm -hmm. but you could get into the, um, you know, get into more of the your instincts and experience, right? Um, of the multitude of gigs you've done and all that, and and knowing, um, you know, what you can do 
comfortably uh, to alleviate any problems. You know, if that's simplifying something, if it's, you know, just trying to adapt to a, a, a player's approach that mm -hmm. you might not be used to. There's that that's in my sense, in in my opinion, that's technique as well. Like it know, absolutely is. And that that's a it little nebulous, is. but mm -hmm. but I want to make sure we're not just like, man, if you don't have your chops at a certain point, you're gonna just fall apart on this gig. That's not necessarily right all that that you're speaking to, if I can speak for you. Yeah, oh, that's exactly right. Because one of the things that, that is on our list, and yes, we do prepare folks, we have show notes. Um one of the things that we have on the list that, that really is a little bit of an umbrella term and absolutely is what you're talking about is that we have to, as professional musicians, over our experience and our time of working on this music, we should ideally be building musical depth, right? Mm -hmm. And that that's exactly what you're talking about is you know that is a certain kind of chops almost you know a technique is having that musical depth that you can fall back on and you can draw from for lack of a better term it could be your instincts right your musical instincts definitely right and so it's very important over you know your learning experience to not be in a vacuum right don't just don't just be the 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 guy that just works on this one thing and just shuts everything out everything else out mm -hmm. because everything that you listen to whether you necessarily like it or not everything that you work on whether you necessarily like it or not that actually it it accrues it builds up it creates that technical headroom that musical headroom that depth headroom so mm -hmm. to speak that you can fall back on that you may not even be necessarily acutely aware of like consciously aware of but you pull it out and it gets you through the night when you're having a bad night. It sure. certainly it doesn't it doesn't hurt, I'll tell you that. And and to speak to that further, um, you know, if you do this long enough, like you're talking about, you know, having some things together or working on some things you might not be altogether crazy about, passionate about. If you do this long enough, it, these things are going to present themselves. And, it's going to happen. And man, if you are already having a rough night and then you're thrown a curveball of, you know, hey, let's do this or, you know, let's do this Latin thing or let's mm -hmm. do this, you know, more progressive kind of vibe here. You know, <laughs> having that's, you know, headroom there. It's like having a little bit of a handle or a clue on some of these things will certainly make problems, you know, easier to, to address and tackle and, and execute. Absolutely. And, and the, the thing with musical depth, which I think you and I have, have kind of thrown that term around a little bit on previous shows, mm -hmm. but it's an intangible. That's the, that's the best way that I can describe it, that I feel like most seasoned musicians can tell by vibe and by listening, especially when you hear somebody play that is of an amateur status, you can kind of tell a lot of times, you know, yeah, he's putting, you know, one where it needs to be and, you know, the snare drums on two and four, whatever, but you can just tell there's an intangible that sometimes, sometimes is not there. And that's, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's really hard to, to qualify, you know, but, it is a feeling and it is a vibe. It's just like, you know, another example could be, for example, you could hear, let's say, a rock drummer trying to play jazz. I mean, that's a kind of little bit of a trite saying, but I mean, if this guy has never played it before, but he knows that you're, you're supposed to go spang-a-lang, 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 hi-hat on two and four, if he's not if he doesn't really know that language, know that vocabulary, doesn't have that depth of knowledge of how that music is supposed to sound, that's another example of that. Yeah. You know? I, I'm okay with a bad spang -a if they're not playing quarter notes on the kick loudly. <laughs> I, I'm pretty forgiving <laughs> in that sense. You know, like, ah, the poor guy, man, he's out of his element. But, man, if you're 
banging away on those corner notes and far from feathering it <laughs> is what I'm saying. Yeah. And then I get a little cranky, but I know, right. I know that's shocking to yeah. many of you listeners who know me that I get cranky, but whatever. Right. Well, just don't. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of cranky, and this is gonna, this John's gonna love this one. John, you ever deal with any bandmates that are, will this say that they're not welcoming of change, change of plans, change of ideas? I, I don't know what you're talking about. See, there we go. So this is the next point: is that one of the things that you really have to come to terms with is when you're on a gig, whether it be even a gig that that you are intimately familiar with from the standpoint that you're playing the same musicians, there are extenuating circumstances that just happen that make things have to change. All of a sudden, the gig no longer starts at eight, it starts at 10. All of a sudden, nope, the green room that you guys are in, you're not in that anymore, man. You are, you know, you're in a broom closet, you know, down the hall. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Hang on a second. No, that call time, that lobby time is no longer 10 o'clock. There's been a problem. It's now 6 a.m. You know, that. I, I was like the, oh, we didn't tell you it was continuous. There you go. That, that's one that. Yeah. I, I And admittedly, I don't deal with that change very well that's a tough one Ooh, it is that's a tough one but ultimately we have to get to the point as being professionals to where not only you expect change to happen but you accept the ramifications of it mm -hmm. just be a blank slate man you know and just make the best out of it you really do because i mean there are enough other things that are going to be outside of your control don't don't let this you know again be a, a thing that brings the gig down for you mm -hmm. that's a hard one to uh you know i mean i i would say on any given night i still struggle with that on occasion i you, you know, know it's tough you know you and you have to maintain your composure and and your response oftentimes because uh, you know sometimes these decisions are made by someone who has no clue completely and that's where the only thing they're going to remember is not that the drummer got cranky mm -hmm. and had an attitude it could be that band had an attitude mm -hmm. oh that that group is a bunch of prima donnas you know because that person might be so overwhelmed and freaked out that they're just going to make this blanket assumption that you all feel that way. So in representing yourself, sometimes you're representing others. So it's yet another reason to really try to temper reaction to change. And it, and it's, and it's something that most of us fail at on occasion. And if you don't, that's awesome, but I know most of us, it's it's a drag. Man, I think it's virtually, it's everyone. Every, because ultimately what it boils down to is we as just pure humans, not just drummers or musicians or, or, or whatever, we have the innate um, idea and the innate need to control our situation our surroundings, that kind of thing. And what that does is, man, that essentially that essentially makes us want to kind of project our ideas of how things are supposed to be. Right. You know what I mean? Like, hey, this is supposed to be this way. And in a perfect world, that's the way that it would be. But of course, it's not a perfect world. And, and for what we do for a living, it's absolutely not a perfect world. Right. You know, I mean, ever, it, ever. <laughs> yeah. And and I mean, you know, you and I both know what we'll call the dark musician. Right. And th those are the guys that, that that inevitably they're like, man, I can't I can't believe we're getting treated like this. Or I can't believe that this is the situation. It shouldn't be that way. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing. It shouldn't be that way. It should be this way. Tone down the snarkiness of this because 
I've been there. <laughs> We've right? all been there. Yeah. Just, just you know, it, it, when you're doing it with that voice, I just feel like you're like pointing at me. <sighs> you heard the stories or something. So just, just, just say it in a monotone kind of matter of fact. I would like the listeners to know that moving this from this moment forward, not only will I be speaking in a monotone, but I will continue to have a completely expressionless face. This is awesome. The entire time. I, of the rest I of promise the I will record and, snippets and put them on Snapchat. So I'll doctor them up with funny faces or weird voices. So completely emotionless. I have no. Sorry. Let's get back to my, my less than <laughs> stellar past in dealing with change well i'll take the heat the, the well one of the one of the examples that i want to give is and, and you guys have heard me kind of draw upon my past and and bag a little bit on the jazz community you know the community that likes to eat their young <laughs> you know that that whole thing is that i can't tell you how many times i've been on gigs like especially at like a jazz club and you get up there and you play and there's as many people on stage as there are in the club or there, you know, there's not as many people in there. And then, you know, the musicians on the break will be like, man, this is America's music. I can't believe, you know, that we don't have any more than 12 people in this club that holds 120, you know, and it's that whole thing of the expectation is not being the reality, you know, is not the expectation. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, again, what we're, what I'm trying to get, get across here is that you need to be accepting of reality and, and not rely on your expectations of what this gig is going to be, man, that will bring you down quicker than anything, man. That's you know, true. this is the way that it needs to be. And again, what we're trying to do here is trying to get you to, you know, maintain your level of professionalism and playing ability, again, above the level of an amateur. Don't let these things drag you down. You got to embrace reality for what it is. Simple as that. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's probably best to make the best of it as you opposed have to. to. Because, man, I've been a brooding jackass in in my day i mean i think i think i actually have my challenge is more uh well let me put it this way i i i probably get i'm bothered less by surprises at gigs than i am a person who's driven by fairness in a business that avoids fairness 98% of the time, yeah. you know, in some way, shape or form, you know, it's just a, a million things out the music business aren't fair. Mm -hmm. And if you're wired to be, you know, a champion of fairness and truth and, and what's right and what should be done and how people should be treated, you know, it's, it's a real uphill climb. And I think as I've, gotten older I've, I've either accepted or mellowed a little bit and then you know only unbearable to be around every other gig now um but my point is um you have got to figure out a way to deal with these things be it changes on a gig the fairness or unfairness of things or or you know quite frankly you're, you're just going to get started and look get looked over we we yeah. know people that Absolutely aren't working we know people yeah. because they're just impossible to be around and um, incredible musicians mm -hmm. that are just unbearable to be around and their workload suffers by by way of that it's a I'm, drag, man. I'm telling you, folks, the quickest and surest path to misery is fighting reality. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, you cannot fight reality. It's just like John said, you've got to find a way to accept it 
And I mean, you got to make lemonade out of lemons, right? I yep. mean, that's, well, that's a beat up saying, but I mean, I mean, it, it really is true. I mean, it's absolutely true. And it's not just in the music community. It's in everyday life. You've, you know, you've, you cannot beat up your, or you can't beat up reality. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, it is what it is. And you can't change. There are certain things that you cannot change. Now, if you have things within your ability to change yourself, absolutely. We encourage that. That's fantastic. But like we said, when you have, uh, uh, again, you're expecting to be able to sleep in, you know, you're going to be down at the lobby at 10 o'clock. All of a sudden, something has changed. The flight has changed. Flights have been canceled. Your flight, instead of being at noon, is now at 8 a.m. You got to be at the lobby at 6 a.m. Hey, it is what it is. You can't change that. Don't fight reality. Yep. And you know, the, the harsh reality of a drummer is, I know this is going to be difficult to swallow, but oftentimes it just isn't about you. You know, just you, you got to roll with it. You're part of a team. You're not the team. You just got to be like, ah, you know what? I mean, maybe you just got to look at it like, well, this sucks, but everybody else has got to do it too. Remind yourself of something as obvious as that. So I guess this is not the appropriate time to say, what would Buddy Rich do? Who? Good answer. John, you were, you were uh, faced with a little dilemma on a recent gig that you were you handled it brilliantly i i am to my understanding and it leads me into the next point all right and when you're having one of these bad nights when you're having an off night it's real easy to snap it's real easy to let go of just basic human politeness you never know when a bandmate might turn around say something that's a little bit we'll call it uh off color or just off base just incorrect you know that kind of thing insensitive insensitive yeah but you have to fall back again on just you have to think before you speak and fall back on just you know just normal human you know decorum and and politeness on mm -hmm. that and that again in itself if you just watch what you say think before you speak be polite be courteous when you're having these bad nights that in itself again that'll pay dividends in the future yeah um i just had a really funny thought like could you imagine if a band in gig communicated via facebook uh wouldn't that be awesome it actually probably is happening. It, it, it would be pretty entertaining in a, in a lot of ways, unless you're, of course, in that band. Could, could this be, could this be our first listener challenge? <laughs> Try it out, guys. Yeah. But 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 treat it like you would a political subject. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Just alienate that guitar player, okay? I Go. I had speaking of the the Facebook political stuff. I had a friend made a little quick post yesterday. He said something along the lines of, "I can't wait for this political cycle to be over so I can get back to seeing what people had for lunch." <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have posted something along those lines this morning. Hmm. Uh, so, John, another thing. If I if it's who I think it is, I don't have a nice cushy job to lose, so I can say things, you know a little more direct what happened to being polite and thinking before you speak but did it's we just talk facebook about that? dude I'm right. not, we're not talking about like face-to-face -face communication you can say whatever you want and it doesn't count well especially if you put a smiley face at the end of it yeah of course man that's my yeah. passive aggressive way of telling someone they're full of it i think we should put a little smiley face at the end of every podcast i like much, it you know yeah. you know i had a, i had a friend of mine say that we, we could we could really make this more interesting if we take that love line kind of vibe like oh okay. you be dr drew and be reasonable and i'd just be this cranky just mud slinging bastard you know the only problem i, got I don't with have that. it in i don't have it in me yeah, the only problem i got with that is if that it falls like true 
like to true life, then eventually you would go on to have like this incredible career and I would be, you know, stuck in the, I would be stuck rehabilitating drummers. Yeah. But you'd have a lot of technique head room. <laughs> I've heard you play, man. Always hang on to yeah. that. Yeah. I'll never have what you have, Phil. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, another thing, and this one I think is going to speak to everybody because I think everybody has probably at one time or another fallen prey to this, is that in particular when you're on the road, but of course this also applies to when you're at home also, please, please, please don't shoot yourself in the foot by consistent and irresponsibly partying all the time. You have to practice self-preservation when you're on the road. You know, when you're out there doing that stuff, when you are knocking it out, you're doing multiple dates, or even if you're out there and you're just doing a couple of dates at a time, doing weekend style stuff, which is very prevalent these days. The last thing you want to do is put yourself behind the eight ball by being responsible, staying out all night, and then again having one of those 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. lobby calls to where you have to travel all day and then play a gig that night. You are setting yourself up to have a bad night by doing that. Yeah. Was eight ball a Freudian slip? <laughs> uh, what's the old saying? Easy E blanked up and got the eight ball rolling. I'm pulling out some, like, late 80s just, NWA. I just, I, yeah, I was just thinking, like, you know, eight ball. That I'm not thinking pool when I think eight ball, and it ties into <laughs> partying on the road a little too much. <laughs> I mean, I've heard. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of um, – uh, look, I'll just, I'll just put it as plain as I can. Whether you're 53 or 23, that crap's catching up to you. And not only professionally and relationally, you can put yourself in a, a, a pretty bad place, you know, overdoing the partying and not taking care of yourself. But then, you know, um, you know, physically, it, it just, it, it's just talk about getting rid of headroom yeah you know it'll eat it up <laughs> you'll just you'll just it's a battle that, that just will continue to win over you in that you know traveling is stressful enough man mm -hmm. and then you know this this legends of rock stars and all this stuff man that's largely a thing of the past people are figuring out like man i just um that's just not not cool and i'm glad for for a lot of my friends who are traveling yeah pardon me mm -hmm. traveling that you know that that is being touted as sage advice and they're following it so yeah i mean it's it, awesome it all it all kind of is attributed to that whole you know self-defeating you know, kind of behavior, yeah. you know, that type no thing, doubt. you know, and again, what we're, what the ultimate goal of this podcast is to give you a whole lot of different reasons and a whole lot of different tips on how to eliminate that, you know, self-defeating, self-loathing style behavior so that you can maintain that consistent level of professionalism, regardless of the circumstances. And yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to have the self-inflicted wound, no. you know, or, or the reputation or even you know, the appearance of that, I man, I would venture to guess that for every person on the, you know, in that situation that's battling addiction or serious challenges yeah. by way of substance abuse, there's three or four that think they should be doing that or, you know, appearances that, right. and it's like, man, just get rid of that nonsense. Yeah, so some of those guys almost feel like that it comes with the job. Yeah, I got to do this. Yeah. And, you know, to be honest with you, other than some adoring fans and some idiots who are stuck in 1987, most people just don't have much patience for it at this point. So, no. So there's, mm -mm. there's, there's just 
more reason to avoid it. Absolutely. You know, have fun, be cool, be smart. Right. Uh, John, when we were throwing ideas around, man, you had a, a wonderful thought. And part of this, well, you could almost say almost everything we talk about uh, you know, regarding this topic has to do with musical depth and instincts. But you said something earlier about having the ability to read the room. Man. Right. Tell us what you kind of mean by that. In other words, you could be having an awful night, but you could fall back on this. And then what, what happens? Yeah. I, there's, there's a lot of little things that long time working pros, I think have that can sort of set them apart or get them through something that might be a challenge to some others uh, that that don't have as much experience or insight. And the, the thing I was touching on more than anything is when you talk about reading a room, as drummers, probably our biggest challenge room to room is a volume thing. Mm -hmm. And you have, you've got to do everything in your power to, when, when I say reading the room, Man, no, within within like eight bars of the first song, just instinctively knowing your volume is cool, your intensity is cool, and when you're when you're talking about reading a room, you know, just the acoustics of it mm -hmm. are not necessarily the only factor here. We could be talking about the environment of the audience. Yeah, are they conversing? Are they? Is it? more of a, uh, you know, mingling kind of thing versus a dancing kind of thing or partying kind of thing or concert setting versus, you know, there's some people that are sort of like reconnecting and all that, you know, all these things. But this definitely caters more to smaller rooms a lot. But how many times I've seen a drummer, you know, come into a gig and Maybe they're used to playing pretty heavy handed or mm -hmm. volume's not of concern and they just do their thing and it's unbearable for everybody in the place. You know, like these, these things are, are, uh, I think a, a great example of what can set a pro apart. Yeah. Just being able to feel that almost out of the gate. Like there's a few rooms in town we both played. That, oh yeah. You know, man, you can't be bashing away. Yeah, and and again, your instincts should hopefully hopefully kick in. Yeah, you know, in that type of situation. Again, regardless of the situation, have the instincts kick in, and then all of a sudden you can smooth this thing out and and have a great musical experience. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, there's another part that kind of kind of is the ugly cousin of that. Um, and it's more gear related and you know we, we both are well aware of how trendy gear choices can be yeah and uh, I think about there's a there's a you know like some of the younger guys right now are like oh, bigger drums or bigger cymbals yeah. and big and dark and you know they might be in a situation 100% of the time where that works and it's appropriate but then they might see someone in a setting like like our steady regular money gig where yeah. you're covering a broad type of music and you know you got 12 people on stage and you got all this and all so you have this whole issue of you know choices in gear where it may, might not be about trends it might not be about uh, you know, having gigantic crashes and ride cymbals or because it's, it's not going to work playing some Motown music for an hour or whatever, you know, you, you, there's, there's some things that as a pro, I, I think you should be very mindful of, and that's just appropriate gear, appropriate for the style, appropriate for the room. And that, that's you, that's you an know, interesting concept, man. I mean, it really is just from the standpoint of like you could literally be setting yourself up in a bad way. Yeah, you know, 
it, imagine that you kind of uh, again unintentionally have a self-inflicted wound, so mm -hmm. to speak. You know, and then that's just compounded by the fact that if you are again having a bad night on top of it, boy, that's that's an interesting no concept. doubt, and yeah. and it could be that just just the people you're playing with could be taken aback and and negatively responding to you by way of your inappropriate choice in gear. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Take volume out of the equation. Take playing out of it. Right. Just the fact that you got twenty-two inch crashes in a small lounge. Right. Yeah. You know. Hey, think. Yeah. You know, uh, it, something talking about choices, like you. This was like choices in gear and whatnot. You also said something that was interesting. What you were saying about sometimes when you're having one of those nights, it's about what you're not going to play. Oh. Man. You know, because. I mean, you know, you could, if you think about it, man, this could actually, this could actually cover a couple of different, you know, themes or topics on this. Mm -hmm. Like, let me tell you how I would think of it, man. I would almost think of it like this. If I'm dead tired, if I'm sick, if I'm not feeling it, if I'm up there and I'm just, if I'm holding it together and making it sound good, you know, playing to a professional level, sometimes... If I don't take a chance, so to speak, you know what I mean? If I don't play some kind of a crazy fill, if I don't add extra ghost notes on the snare drum, it allows me to actually concentrate more or just think more about playing good time, making it feel right. And I've made a conscious choice at that time not to play certain things because of the potential that, you know what, I'm not feeling it tonight. I've just got to, I've got to maintain what I know I can do and I know that I can do well, invite the rest of these guys in who could potentially be having a bad night also, mm -hmm. tired, whatever, this experiencing some of the same challenges that we, bad green room, bad food, no food, that Sound. sort of thing. Sound issues. Yeah, totally. And therefore just go, look guys, we're running on a little bit of, you know, we're running on pure adrenaline tonight. We're a skeleton crew. Here it is. I'm going to, play right down the center let's let's make the best of this let's do a great job yeah man that that's gold and it, it's selfless and it's it's definitely a from time to time it's just necessary mm -hmm. you know you got to put it all aside and be like like a, an example of just take a style let's, let's take you're doing a gig where you're just playing standards mm -hmm. and maybe the bass player just doesn't have it together. He's like time's weird or rushes are dragging, whatever. And you got three people playing three different tempos and both. And you know, man, and your reputation is you're a stellar jazz player. Yeah. Put all that aside. And I don't care if you got to play cross stick two and four, mm -hmm. give them that foundation to give it a chance love it to be musical love it you know and that's where your professionalism and your instincts and your experience and everything can turn something around and it could keep you from going crazy too where you're just like hey you know what man i'm gonna give these guys every opportunity to kind of pull it in and make this happen yeah and if it doesn't you got the the idea that you did everything you could to make it work and you also have the option ability or choice of saying no the next time yeah yeah which is okay too you know there's 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 nothing wrong with that if you just think i don't think that situation's going to work for me just let it go it's okay another will present itself i mean that's that is a wonderful way to look at that. It's hard in yeah. the moment, but mm -hmm. um, I, uh, I, man, I've done, I've, and I've talked with many really great musicians that talk about on occasion, you're in a position where you're playing with people that maybe aren't on your, the same level as you musically yeah. or professionally. And you almost like play down to the potential or you just feel like you can't get it together well there's certain things that are going to happen like a bad bass player for a drummer 
Yeah. I mean, man, it it's it's very possible. It's just not going to work. Yeah. And you can try to be accommodating and still might not. But um, it's a weird little phenomenon where sometimes it's kind of like sports teams can yeah. do that too. Like they'll mm-hmm. play their minds out of, you know, against Alabama and then blow the game the next week, you know, playing some small school. and Wofford. You know, just get, yeah. You know? And they got that's some, they got a, some wide receivers that shouldn't be overlooked. The receivers of Wofford U. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, um, but look, your instincts and your experience, as we talked about, can set you apart. And they should set you apart. And you should do everything in your power Mm -hmm. to use those to make this gig better and to assure they won't hire an amateur. At, at, How about that? Yeah, there, there you go. And and hopefully we've been able to kind of codify this stuff today for everybody because, you know, essentially, again, ultimately everybody wants to feel good when they leave the gig. Yeah. You know what I mean? You want to feel, even, even if it's not, again, this fantastic, you know, uh, kind of musical spiritual experience which you know everybody tries to get for that but again we're speaking in terms of reality and we've talked about not fighting reality today and the reality is is that you are going to have bad nights and hopefully we just want to make sure that everybody is aware that everybody has them and then here this is our way of how you can get past this or at least how you can prepare yourself in some ways you know to set yourself up so that no matter what happens to you, hey, at least you're going to be at this level of, of good, mm-hmm. you know? So hopefully everybody got something out of this. Oh, that would be awesome. And don't forget, man, it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of challenges just within yourself, physically, mentally, physiologically, mm-hmm. you know, it could be as much as what's going on with the moon. <laughs> the, the, you know, the, whatever. I mean, I'm, people thought, you know, kind of poo-poo some of that stuff, yeah. but atmosphere and, I mean, man, changes of weather. Changes of season. Changes of yeah. season, man. It can just whack you out. It's hot one day, cold the next. Your body reacts to that. You know, all these things. So just don't be too hard on yourself, but, man, try to apply some of these things to to make less than desirable situations and nights that are a little more challenging than others, a success. I'm a Scorpio. Uh, neat. <laughs> Capricorn, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How did I know? Because I didn't want to right. embrace whatever you are, because <laughs> clearly not as awesome as a Capricorn. <laughs> oh, well. You know what it's time for, John? Calling that Jamaican accent lady and seeing what our future That's Miss Cleo, man. Yeah, if we're going to just go, let's go all in. Well, let me tell you, the first thing I'm going to do when I call Miss Cleo is I'm going to ask who's going to be in the World Series because I obviously don't know. Sports Illustrated already told you. Who did they say? I don't read that that rag. It says the 2016 world champion Chicago Cubs that are all on there. Really? Come on, man. Who, who are they supposed to play, by the way? The experts told you in April. <laughs> but I thought the experts said they were supposed to play like the Tampa Rays or something like that, right? Well, they didn't tell you they play 162 games either. And, yeah. you know, like the experts, they're so awesome. Sorry, TJ. Yeah. Any, anyway, we're going to go ahead and move on. It's time for another great underappreciated drummer. Yay! I like it. Hadn't done one of those in a little while. I'm so. going first. All you're right. You're always going to have your encyclopedia of facts and knowledge and what type of cables they used on the <laughs> U87 that hung over the drums. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Uh. Shock mounts. It's all about shock mounts, John. And an awesome old church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Truth I, be told. I, 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 I know I know what you're referring to. Yes. Go go go. And ahead. it's true. Yeah. Go go for it. Uh my 
underappreciated track. And I say under because it had a mo its moment in the sun. And I just thought about like how it really made me feel, which was really awesome. And it's a jazz song. And yeah, to me, it was kind of like one of these moments where I realized, you know, like what jazz, what I, I kind of not realized, but when I sort of developed a opinion about jazz and that is jazz should be forward moving and forward thinking and, you know, not just rehashing kind of the miles thing, but way less sophisticated and intellectual, but yeah. You know. And it's got to feel good again, this track, it had its moment in the sun and a lot of us, okay dug it but uh the the song is pools by steps ahead mr peter erskine and it good set lord my mind good lord it just wrecked me when i first heard that do you know how do you know how many times i have tried to rip that groove off to play on other stuff and of course it doesn't work no but good lord it, it's a magic moment it, it, it absolutely is and it, and it literally changed kind of my thinking i was kind of in that young lion sort of mindset for a long time with jazz and i'd appreciate some groovy stuff or some fusion-esque stuff you know but that really kind of just tipped the scales for me with like it's fresh it's new it sounds great the instrumentation's amazing and whatever this freak is playing mm -hmm. I, I don't think i could play it but i want to listen to it a thousand times let me go ahead and, and tell the listeners that this is the first I'm hearing. I had no idea what John was going to pick today. I'm titillated. I'm enraptured. I I love it, man, because let me tell you, that is a fantastic drum track. It came to me when you went downstairs and made a copy of our outline for me. So I, I got lucky. Listeners, the curtain is being pulled back from Oz. Roger Hawkins could have played it. <laughs> <laughs> he, he may, may, maybe he could have you know uh but you know on that track aside from the primary groove that erskine is playing on there let me tell you another part that i love and the sound of it there's something about the sound of it when brecker is doing his solo mm -hmm. uh erskine plays this little rim Thing. Clickety the, clackety the, clack, thing. Clack, 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 is that clack, clack. stick and rim? I think it is. Like yeah. he's hitting the stick and the rim, and yeah. yeah. And man, oh. I the, the sound of it, it just sounds so good. This nice thick woody sound it, that, that grooves. That, that record across the board has yeah. that sonically. It's like yeah. But yeah, the, man, I was always fascinated with that. Yeah, particular part too. Right. You know, th there's another thing. It just about the track that that's not necessarily drum centric it is still percussion centric but something about it is the the way that uh the vibes were recorded on on that track mm -hmm. wow boy those vibes. i run hot and cold on the way vibes sound on on recordings sometimes i like the way they sound i love the way they sound on on that record it sounds like uh Maynary has got like a really uh slow vibrato you know the motor it's like he's got a really slow motor going on the thing and it it just it's perfect, man. It yeah, really it, is. Like uh, that. Sometimes that fast vibrato can take away from yeah. what someone's playing or how you interpret a, a specific, you know, melody or lick. And a, they just—that's yet another of a, a thousand reasons that yeah. record's really magic. First steps brilliant. ahead. Yeah, um, it's the first record. Yeah, and it's the first record in like release right. they i think there was a band called steps that it was kind of formed out of but right in my opinion that particular album and that lineup were just yeah um just a magic magic moment awesome awesome call thank you sir yeah my turn and i'm gonna go with tony williams walking on four and more nobody's ever heard that before i did I heard that hi-hat that plays chord notes at like 350 with a left foot, and I just said, I don't like you. <laughs> and then it just got worse from that. <laughs> oh, yeah. this alien. <laughs> well, let me say this. That was I was being cheeky. Uh, 
for, for those of you, it, but let me say this. First off, shame on anybody who thought that was the the real uh, that was the real track because it's one of the most heralded drum tracks in the history of music. So if you haven't heard that, shame on you. Go out right now, get the album Miles Davis Four and More. But that's not what we're here today for. It'll John. change your life. Yeah, it absolutely will. Uh, I am going to go with Tony Williams, though, John. I like it. Yeah, and. I'm going to talk just a little bit about the circumstances of this track. Um, this, to my knowledge, was on the last record that Tony Williams played on before he died. He died back in, I think it was 97. It's in the 97 or 98. Uh, and for a brief period of time, he went back to kind of his early fusion roots, you know, of like the late 60s and early 70s. And he, along with the wonderful bassist Bill Laswell, put together a kind of an experimental group called Arcana. And um, I'll just, I'll be the first one to say that those albums can be a little hard to listen to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but the track that I'm going to talk about that I, I would love for everybody to listen to. It's from the Arcana album called Ark of the Testimony. And it's a track called Illuminator. And it's a it's a really hard hitting raw fusion tune that it's really kind of a duet between Tony Williams and the wonderful guitarist Buckethead. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, the whole band plays on it, but there are these kind of dedicated solo sections where uh, Buckethead and Tony Williams are kind of riffing off each other, just playing all the way through. Uh, and it, it really show it's a really it's a nice showcase to show people that are not familiar with especially the latter years of Tony Williams and that he did go back to playing some of that raw fusion stuff that man he could flat out do it man he sounds like a million bucks on this track uh so that's that's my pick it's illuminator from Arcana's album Ark of the Testimony the, uh, the the arcana the band that was put together is primarily Tony Williams and Bill Laswell. Pharaoh Sanders was also on that track. Also, I wanted to mention that because yesterday was his birthday. I, yeah, I I look forward to hearing it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm certainly going to listen to it. But, uh, there ain't no click on that track, brother. I'll would, tell you I, that. I would hope that there never was on anything Tony did. Unleash the beast. Do you think, wouldn't it be funny if Buckethead was a vegetarian? <laughs> I, this just came to my mind when you were rambling on about music that goes yeah. over my head. Like, I, I, I'm dumbing it down here, but that would be pretty funny. It would be funny. I, I, don't, I, I don't think I'm speaking out of school when, when I say that his name is Brian Carroll. Right? No, 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 no. That's, yeah. that's I think common knowledge. Common knowledge. Not common right. knowledge, but yeah, it's obtainable knowledge you know how i would you know how if i didn't know you know how i would ask him what his name is yeah oh. i would i would go like for example let's say he's playing on a gig mm -hmm. that i booked i would go so mr buckethead and see i'm assuming that he's got the bucket on right now in the mask he, like even funeral. with his yeah. best and top right yeah, yeah that, would that be great. what i would what I would say to him is I would say, Mr. Buckethead, who do I make the check out to? Oh, that's Do you good. like that? That's yeah. good, huh? It'd be his management or something. Yeah. He'd be like, God, be like Buck dang it. Buckethead Management LLC. Yep. Yeah. Undoubtedly. I had yeah. a good time today, man. Me too, man. Um, being a pro, you know, it's rewarding. It's not that difficult. It's uh, not brain surgery. But make sure you're staying on your game. That's it. Keep you working. Yeah, that's right, man. We we want to help you be better than even even on your worst day than even the best amateur, right? Keep yep. you working. Hey, it's okay to use a, a decent sized bass drum in a small, low volume room. By decent size, you mean twenty six? No. Sixteen? No. Fourteen? No. <laughs> 
Eight. <laughs> <laughs> just, just enough to get the beat yeah, out there. Yeah. All right, guys. Reach out to us. We love hearing from you. We got some really nice emails this last week. We do enjoy hearing from you guys. You can reach out to us, our traditional email again, drummersweeklygroovecast at gmail.com. Subscribe to us, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play Podcast, your favorite podcast app. We bring something new to you every Monday, whether it's good or not, you know. Oh, hey, mm -hmm. next week, we're going to bring something good, really good, and really different. I don't want to say it, man. No, it doesn't. You don't have to say anything. That I'm, I'm just being, you know, kind of vague. It's all good. We just want to make sure we we don't we don't want to like build you up, Buttercup. We want to make sure that we deliver Look, on what, the goods. What I said could pertain to anything we do. All right, Nebulous John. It's going to be good. It's going to be awesome, and, it, and it's going to be different. It's going to be different than anything we've done, right? I'm going to say yes, even though I don't know what he's referring to. So if it doesn't happen, you blame John. Right now I hear Sam Morgan saying, would you shut up and play me? <laughs> Just shut up. I'm out of here. Up. See ya. Bye.